Hello everyone, this is Zaini and today we are going to be talking about a very interesting topic mainly for our OSCEs and also maybe for part one um, which is MRONJ or medication related osteonecrosis of the jaw. So first and the foremost, why do we need to know about this? We have quite a few scenarios in our OSCEs where we have a person who is taking either bisphosphonates or denosumab and we have that part in our management as well. So we need to be well aware about it. So we are going to be using a few of the pointers from TG and discussing them, which will help you with your OSCE scenarios as well. So first and the foremost, what is MRONJ? We all know that MRONJ or medication related osteonecrosis of the jaw is an area of exposed bone in the jaw, which is persisting for more than eight weeks in a patient who is currently or previously treated with an anti-resorptive or anti-angiogenic drug and has not received any radiation therapy to the craniofacial region. So this is the exact definition of MRONJ. We don't need to know it per se, but this is what will happen if MRONJ occurs. Now, the second point is what kind of medications causes MRONJ? So we know that bisphosphonates are one of the major ones. Then we have denosumab, and we also have what we call as anti-angiogenic drugs. So these are the three classes of drugs that can lead to MRONJ. Now the next thing is what is the mechanism of action? So there's two mechanisms of action. Most of the time, these medications relate to the remodeling or the renewal and repair of the bone. And that's how they cause this problem. The other possibility with an angio anti-angiogenic drug is that they can interfere with the formation of blood vessels. So these are the two mechanisms of action that usually lead to this problem. Now from an osteo perspective, what do we need to know? So usually we will have a scenario where a patient is on bisphosphonates or maybe using denosumab. And we have to manage that patient because there can be some risks involved especially if you're doing any bone invasive procedures on this patient. So anything such as an extraction, anything which requires raising a flap or an implant, this could be a possible risk. So they want us to be aware about it and also know how to inform the patient about it. So how do we do this risk assessment? TG has a very nice table describing all the options that we need to ask the patient. But basically, we need to find out why they are taking this medication, what form they are taking it, what dosages, what is, when was their last dose, because this will help us decide whether they're at a high risk for this or at a low risk and will affect our management plan. The next thing we need to know is if they have any additional risk factors, because this can further contribute to causing the problem. So finding out from the patient if they're on any other uh, medications, if they have any diabetes, if they have any form of um, tobacco use, existing periodontal disease, everything which is listed in TG will help us make that evaluation. Finally, once we've asked all the questions to our patient and made a good risk assessment, we can categorize them as a low risk where it still might be safe for us to proceed with the procedure. But remember, if they're at a high risk, then it's always better to get some advice from the specialist or even better to refer them to the specialist for any treatment. Hope this was helpful. If you have any other doubts or questions, we are most free to discuss them in an upcoming video. Until next time. I hope you found this video helpful. If there is any other topics that you would like us to discuss, please feel free to leave it in the comment section below. And if you liked our videos, please feel free to like and subscribe to our channel. Until next time.